Well, hello to you. Today is Tuesday, the 20th of August, and I'm Pastor Bruce Kishnick, Senior Pastor here at Grace Lutheran in New Albany, Indiana. I'm glad you're with me this morning. The title is Passing the Exam. And the reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 10. St. Paul writing, Therefore we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done well in the body, whether good or bad. I had to go and get my biannual physical exam done today for my commercial driver's license, a CDL that I hold that allows me to legally drive our church bus with people on board. Pastor Woods and I both have to get these exams, and we both share laughs at how simplistic they usually are. To test for color blindness, the examiner had me look at a and an eye test chart and identify the colors of a post-it note, yellow, and two lines that ran across the chart, red and green. So those are the colors of a stoplight. And I correctly identified yellow, red, and green. The hearing test had me standing with my back to her covering one ear. Well, no wonder I get the pastor. I got some kind of pop-up that came, so you're going to have to cut this piece out. Let me back up a little bit. The hearing test had me standing with my back to her, covering one ear with my hand, and then repeating to her what she whispered behind me. And she whispered, dog, mouse, cat. <laughs> and I re correctly responded, dog, mouse, cat. The physical exam had me standing on tiptoe, then rocking back on my heels. Then she had me walk five paces to the corner of the room and back to her. I asked her if she's ever had anyone fail that part of the exam, and she laughingly said, no, she hadn't. Suffice it to say, I passed the exam. Remember when you were in high school or college and the semester came to an end? There followed a week of exams, often two or even three in a day. My grandchildren only had one or two exams a day, followed by two or three days before their next one. Seemed much more relaxed than those that I experienced. St. Paul in our text for today speaks of a much more exacting and critical examination that he says each one of us, us must face someday. Every time that text is read on a Sunday or in some other service, that last sentence always jumps out at me rather glaringly, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Doesn't that jump out at you too? We are told over and over that we are saved by grace, not by good works. Yet here, Paul seems to speak the exact opposite. He says that we must stand before the judgment seat of Christ and be examined. A judgment appears to result from that examination. Does that make you uncomfortable? It will if you've fallen into the religion of the world, that is, works righteousness. All the other religious systems on earth teach some form of works righteousness. Even some Christian preachers, denominations, and cults slide into this as well. The emphasis is always on how much good you have done compared to how much bad you have done. One is balanced against the other. If the imbalance is too great toward the bad, well, then you will receive punishment for the things you have done. If the balance falls in favor of the good, well, then you will receive a reward. Heaven or 70 virgins, your enemies as your forever slaves, or some other enjoyable afterlife bling. But that is not Christian doctrine, nor do we know that from Scripture. We are saved solely, no pun intended, by the gracious work of Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
we trust not in the good we are able to do, but in the good he was able to do on our behalf. His living, his teaching, his death, and his resurrection are the propitiation for our sins, the payment, or even better, the cure for the sin that ails us. When Paul says good or bad, he is keeping in mind what makes anything a person does good. The good works we are able to do are good only to God because they are done through faith in Christ Jesus. What makes them good is the faith which engendered them. Here's my example. You have a five-year-old and you're at a weenie roast. That little one wants to make you a hot dog. As you watch, they put the stick in and it comes out the side of the hot dog. Maybe they drop it on the ground once and they brush it off. They put it back into a bun. They manage to tear up that bun. That one, well, first, before they do that, they stick it into the fire, right? And I mean into the fire. Not over the coals where they'd get a nice even heat. No, they stick it in the flames and the outside of that hot dog becomes charred and black, while the inside is probably still cold to the taste. And when they put it in the bun, they load it up with lots of condiments, lots of mustard, ketchup, relish, along with some marshmallow goo that they got on there because their uncle just gave them a marshmallow. And there's a little spilled cola on the bottom of the bun, along with just a little sand picked up along the way. When that hot dog is offered to you, it's a mess. But as a good parent, you take that hot dog, you take a bite, and what do you say? You say, oh boy, that is the best hot dog I've ever had. Are you lying? No, no. What makes it good? It's the love that went into making it. Not how well it was done, but the love that made that happen. So it is with our good works. They are good because of the love that wrought them. Hardly a one of them do we ever accomplish that isn't in some way tainted by our sinfulness. Either we are grudging in the doing, or we're self-proud about what we did, or we make sure others see our goodness. Whatever the case, by ourselves we can never do enough to please God. But for Jesus' sake, when we do what is right, because we belong to Christ, then the Father can take delight in us. But it's only through Christ. Those who try to please him without Christ may do all kinds of civilly good works, but they're not acceptable. They don't count for anything because Christ is not in them. Hang on to Jesus, whatever comes, and know the Father sees us as good because he sees Christ on us and in us. When we stand before the judgment seat, we know what the verdict will go that the verdict will go in our favor because Jesus will recognize us as his own, purchased and won by the blood of the Lamb. So we make it our goal to please him. Why? Because we love him. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks that you have called us to be your people. And in that calling, you've also called us to do good. But Father, we must also confess that most every good thing we do is in some way tainted and sullied by our sinfulness. And yet you take those things and you call them good and you call us good because you see Jesus on us and in us. It's for his sake that you do that. And we give you thanks for it. Oh, we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to do many good things. but. We also know that a lot of those good things just aren't going to measure up unless they're done through our faith. So, Lord, we pray that you'd bless us and enable us to be like Jesus to other people. And where we fail, forgive us for his sake. Grant us your grace in this day. Watch over our loved ones wherever they may be. And all of these things we bring before you now in Jesus' name. Amen. So, tonight at 530 There'll be supper, and then Grace on Wednesday will kick in at 6 o'clock until 7.30. So we've got classes for three-year-olds all the way up to high school, and there's an adult class that'll be taught as well. And so you're invited to come and, and enjoy that. It's the first night of Grace on Wednesday. So I will come and talk to you again next week, and in the meantime, 
God bless you and keep you safe. Bye-bye. So, Pastor Woods, this is where I sign off. I'll do another one when I'm back from Canada.